Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go, Lord, in prayer, please. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful and honored, Lord. We come in fellowship your presence here you were. We thank the Lord for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who redeemed us, who delivered us, who saved us, who gave us everlasting, eternal, abundant life. And Father God, we thank you, Lord, for our salvation in Jesus' name. Lord, pray for our nation. We speak peace to our country. We decree and declare our nation righteous nation, cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus, the Jesus Lord of the United States of America. And Lord, we pray for all the nation world that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness. And then they should come. We thank the Lord for all those missionaries out there who's preaching Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord, protecting them, meeting all their needs in abundance in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray for all the body of Christ. Each of you believe become baptized in the Holy Spirit. Taught about who they are in Christ. Going forth in this life, ruling and reign in Christ. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and Israel, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for divine protection, Lord. And Lord, I thank for anointing me today that will say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me utterance, Holy Ghost. Now pray, follow us, Lord, as we hear your word. And hear from the Holy Ghost, we'll go forth and become doers of your word, led by the Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's start our Bibles over here at the book of Isaiah. We'll go here to Isaiah chapter 53 and start here and build a foundation. Thank you, Jesus. Now, verse 4 says here, Surely we borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Those words are also sicknesses and pains, sorrows and griefs. Yet we did esteem and strict and submit of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastised our peace upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now let's go here to Matthew. Matthew's going to refer to this by the Holy Spirit in Matthew chapter 8. Now the scripture says here in verse, we'll start in verse 16. When evil was come, they brought unto Jesus many was possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. That it might be filled with spoke by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself, took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Now let's go over here to 1 Peter, please. Like you have towards the book of Revelation, way over to the right. In 1 Peter chapter 2, now the Holy Spirit through Peter is going to put our healing in the past tense. By this time, Jesus already paid the price for our redemption. And the scripture says here in verse 24, Who his own self bear our sins, his own body in the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Notice those last six words says here, by whose stripes ye were healed. Well, worse past tense is heals past tense. And as believers, we want to see it that way. We want to know that Jesus has already done this for us, that he's redeemed us from the curse of law. Like Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us the curse of law being made a curse for us, written curse for any tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. Now verse 29 said, and if he be Christ, then Abraham's seed, Abraham's seed, and heirs according to promise, from Galatians 3, 13, 14, and verse 29. Now as believers, we want to build ourselves up on God's word. Like this scripture said there in 1 Peter 2, 24, we should live unrighteous. Well, knowing that we're righteous helps us live a victorious life. Righteous means that we're right standing with God. Let's go back over here to uh, 2 Corinthians, please. We'll read here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we'll start here in verse, uh, it's verse 17. This shows what happens to us when we receive Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. Now, the, the Bible says here in verse, beginning of verse 17, Therefore, if any man or person be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. All things are of God, have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God's Christ reconciled the world himself, not imputing their trespass to them, and committed us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. Now, verse 21. For he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now see, Jesus, what he did for us, he made us right with God. When we receive Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, we become the righteous of God in Christ. The Bible says in Romans 5, verse 9, that we became justified. Now we're justified by his blood. Justified means God sees us as though we've never sinned. That's going to help you and I out too, as we renew our mind to God's word, begin to see ourselves in line with God's word, that we are everything his word says we are, and we have what his word says we have, and we can do what his word says we can do. The scripture said there that we've been made the righteous of God in Christ. And it's good just always we say that to ourselves and make that a faith confession. I am the righteous of God in Christ. Now we read there in 1 Peter 2, 24, said should live unrighteous. See, living, knowing that we're right with God because what Jesus did, because of his blood. It's not our performance that made us right with God or being, us being real good little Christians. No, praise God for that, whatever that is. But no, it's knowing that Jesus did this for us. Jesus is our salvation. And he did it all for us. And God freely gave us all that he had when he gave us Jesus. The Bible says so in Romans chapter 8, verse 32. That if he didn't withhold Jesus, he's not going to withhold anything else. 
And Jesus is God's gift to the world. Jesus is God's grace, grace gift. And we receive Jesus, receive all the Father God has. That's what Jesus, you know, he told the story there about the prodigal son. He said there in Luke 15, verse 31, all that I have is thine. And we need to see ourselves that way there. We're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, the Bible said. We're in Christ Jesus. The Bible said there in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, and Galatians 3, verse 28. So God sees us in Christ. He sees us complete. He sees us holy. He sees us sanctified. Now, why is that important for us to know that? Well, so we'll know that God's not withholding anything from us. And he's not upset at us because of something we did wrong. He's not punishing us for the sins we've committed. Once we receive Jesus Christ, Lord, we receive, you know, a, a free life of the, that we're not going to be held in bondage by any guilt or condemnation. We, we've been reconciled to God. We've been acquitted. That means that we're not guilty. Jesus paid the price for us. Not only he took our sins, but he took our judgment of sin. And he took the curse, or God laid the curse upon Jesus that was on mankind. That's again, that's why we have Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us. Curse the Lord. How did Jesus do that? Being made a curse for us. For his written curse is everyone that hangs the tree. That's why Jesus was crucified. And God, this is God's plan all along. So mankind could receive everlasting life. And when we receive Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells inside of us. Remember 1 John 4.4 4 says, You're of God, little children, and overcome them, because great is he that's in you, he's in the world. Now we read there in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, and Matthew 8, 17, and 1 Peter 2, 24, that let us know that not only Jesus took our sins, but he also took our sick and diseases when he went to the cross. Now it's important for us to know this. We need to focus on that and realize that Jesus did this for me. And God sees me complete, righteous, and holy. Because remember, we've read there before in Colossians 1, verse 22, and Colossians 2, verse 10, that we're holy in God's sight and we're complete. So we're not trying to become complete and then we'll get our blessing from God. No, as soon as we receive Jesus, we're complete. We're complete in God's sight. And we don't want to think about, well, there's probably something wrong in my life and that's why I don't have the blessing or healing. No, Jesus already got this for us. He already gave it to us. We could never be perfect in our performance and our behavior and perfect in our faithfulness and obedience to God. It's just never going to happen in this life because there's always shortcomings. You know, we always come up short, but that's okay because Jesus made us right with God. And that doesn't mean we don't, we don't behave right or whatever that is or be faithful to God. Of course we're faithful, but we don't have to be, we're not be perfect faithfulness in this life. Jesus only wanted us perfect in faithfulness and God sees us in Christ. So God sees us as his beloved. He doesn't see any faults or flaws in our life. And it's important that we begin to see ourselves that way. Not because we think we're good people because of what we've done or haven't done, no. We need to realize that we're right with God because God sees us in Jesus and that we're in Christ Jesus. And knowing that we're right with God helps us to receive from God because the guilt and condemnation will come to every believer to try to talk them out of the blessings of God. Well, the reason you don't have this is because you, you've got some secret sin in your life. And there'll be people come around and tell you stuff like that. Well, you want to resist all that. We're real, real, and know there's no condemnation that in Christ Jesus. And because of Jesus' blood, his blood is always constantly cleansing us. And when it comes to divine healing, healing's already been given to us. It's God's will that everybody walk in divine health and live in abundance in this life. But if some kind of symptom comes on a person's body as a believer, they want to begin to re resist in Jesus' name. Any kind of pain, any kind of discomfort, we want to resist in Jesus' name. No, I refuse this in Jesus' name. It's written, himself took my infirmities and bare my sickness and by his stripes I'm healed. And just talk back to those things. Jesus taught us to speak God's word. He taught us there in Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4. Jesus kept saying, it is written. And what would Jesus do? He would speak God's word. He'd speak a verse of scripture and quote a verse of scripture and say what the scripture said. That's what we do as believers. We just continually, continually say what the word says about us. When it comes to healing, we have Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. We have Matthew 8, 17. We have 1 Peter 2, 24 that shows us. Th there are three scriptures there that show us that not only Jesus took our sins, but he took our sick and diseases. And what we, we need to realize that God doesn't want us sick. He doesn't place sickness on us when we do something wrong. We're not paying for our sins we committed because Jesus took that payment. He's the one that took our judgment to sin. But what happens to the believer? They're not taught about who they are in Christ Jesus. They have the tendency to think, well, the reason I have this pain or sickness, whatever it is, because you know you don't realize what I did in life and I'm just paying for my sins. People talk that way. No, 
That's, that's the person that doesn't realize who they are in Christ Jesus, knowing that Jesus paid for our sins. We, we've been acquitted. We're not guilty because of what Jesus did. And that's the salvation, what God gave us. That's the grace that God gave us. And knowing that we should live under righteous helps us to, to receive all the Father God has. Knowing uh, every day, just uh, knowing I'm the righteous of God in Christ and act accordingly. That we're not walking around with guilt and condemnation and shame in our life, that we resist that. See, so often people will try to put some kind of shame or guilt on you. So many charismatic people, you know, they'll begin to say, well, you know, I'm just praying for you and the Lord showed me that there's some secret sin in your life. You've got something going on or you got strife with your husband or wife. You get rid of that, then God's going to heal you. No, we, we don't accept that. We don't do anything to get healed because it's already been given to us. You would never tell a sinner they got to do stuff to get and then God will save them. You wouldn't say, well, now you got to quit living with that guy or living with that woman. No, you let them know, come to, to, come to Jesus just as you are and receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Don't try to clean up your act. And then, because I've witnessed the people and they thought, well, when I quit drinking, when I quit smoking, when I quit and begin to go down this litany that they had, then I'll come to God or I'll, then I'll go to church or then I'll, you know, I'll get saved. That's what they mean. Well, no, I'm trying to talk them into it. Come just as you are. Oh, no, I wouldn't be a hypocrite. So they come up with all these kinds of excuses and reasons. Well, some of them are real sincere about it. They think, well, I couldn't do that because, you know, I got something going on in my life. In other words, they bring up a sin they're doing or some kind of weight or bondage they have in their life. That's what Jesus wants to know. Jesus never told anybody, go get right with God, come back, and I'll heal you. Now, one time you ever tell anybody that gospel's that. But see, that got added to the, later on with guilt and condemnation. And But what happened was people is that, you know, they thought, well, the reason I, God hadn't healed me, everybody prayed for me, they laid hands on me, they anointed my oil, the elders prayed for me, and I never did get healed. There's going to be something wrong in my life. Well, thinking there's something wrong in your life is what's wrong. Don't think anything about your life. Think about what Jesus did. Consider Jesus, what he did. Don't consider yourself. Don't consider that you haven't been living a perfect life because no one is. The person that thinks that they are, they're really messed up. That's like the Pharisees, the Sadducees. They're not receiving from God because they think they're so self-righteous. And you want to think about it. Just come just as you are and just thank you, Father God. I want to thank your word says, by his stripes I'm healed. I thank you, Lord, by his stripes I'm healed. I thank Father God, Jesus took my infirmities, bear my sicknesses, and I just give you all the praise and glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. And just, that's the best thing you can do, is just come just as you are. Because God sees you complete. He doesn't see any faults in our life. He doesn't see any flaws in our life. He sees us, again, he sees us holy, complete. He sees us righteous. You know, we refer to this, go here and read here in Colossians again, in Colossians chapter 1. In, uh, or we quoted him earlier, in Colossians 1, and uh, verse 22 says here, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. And think about this in chapter 2, verse 10, it says, and you're complete in him, which is the head of all principal and power. As long as the Christians try to become complete and get rid of things in their life, they'll never live in victory. They'll always live in guilt and condemnation because they'll always disqualify themselves in their own mind why they don't have something in life. Why they don't have their miracle job or the miracle that they're, they're believing God for in their life. It's the reason is because there's got to be something wrong in my life. We don't look at ourselves. In the Old Testament, when you brought your sacrifice, the priest, they didn't look at the person. They looked at the sacrifice. Let's say it was a lamb. They look at the lamb to see if there's any flaw, faults or flaws. And then they'd offer it up there. What? Well, Jesus is our lamb. So God's not looking at us. He's looking at Jesus. And he sees us complete. This is what the scripture said. And he sees us holy. That's what the scripture said. In God's sight, we're holy. See, God, God's not ashamed of us. People think, well, you know, God's mad at you. He's ashamed. He's not even mad at the world because he's not adding up their sins. We read there earlier in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. See, people always want God to judge America or judge some country because of what they've done bad. But we have to realize that this is like Sodom and Gomorrah. All this sin was placed upon Jesus Christ. And you're leaving, we live in a day of grace and grace dispensation. We want to take advantage of the grace of God that God gave us and know that we're right with God because of what Jesus did. God's not on a sin hunt. He's not looking for someone he can judge sin because he put that judgment upon Jesus Christ. The wrath of God, the punishment for sin was placed upon Jesus. And all a person has to do is receive Jesus Christ the Lord. By doing so, they'll never face the wrath of God. You know, they're there in Colossians. Just go to your right to 1 Thessalonians. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10 says, To wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. And then in chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians, verse 9 says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, 
but obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. We referred to this earlier. Let's go back to Romans, please. In Romans chapter 5, now the scripture says here in verse, in verse 9. I'm going to read verse 8 first, please. But God uh, commanded his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we should be saved in the wrath through him. Now there's three scriptures that we're not going to face the wrath of God. So we don't have to be afraid that, you know, going to heaven, ducking. No, we're supposed to, the Bible says over in Hebrews, let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. And verse, verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly and throw in a grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Notice here it says, here, come boldly. Because we're cleansed by the blood of Jesus, we can come to God boldly. Knowing, it, it, especially when you've sinned, that's the time when you really need to come to God for grace and mercy. Knowing that I'm right with God because of what Jesus did. See, so often when a person sin, they got some sin going on in their life, they avoid God. They avoid going to church. See, that's exactly what Satan wants. He wants you to isolate yourself from other people. And this also happens to people when they get offended. They get offended because something happened at church or in their family reunion or whatever, and now they don't talk to their family anymore. And now they don't go back to church. That's exactly what Satan wanted. Well, they realize they're, they're falling right into Satan's plan because Jesus taught us when you, when you hear the word, Satan comes immediately to take it out. And he used affliction and persecution. He used those things, and immediately the Bible says they became offended. Now, what they do? Well, they, they cease to follow the Lord. No, what we want to do is persevere, knowing that I'm right with God because of Jesus' blood, and God's not upset at me because I sinned yesterday or today or whenever. Are we to sin? No, but we sin more than we realize. The Bible says anything to him knows to do good and does not to him is sin. We may have done that this morning. Anything's not of faith is sin. Have you ever doubted? Well, certainly, every day we've doubted. I mean, even John the Baptist doubted if this was Jesus or not. Well, <laughs> thank God for the blood of Jesus that's constantly cleansing us. And a person that's think, you know, that gets over to self-righteous, they think they're so right with God because they don't dip, they don't chew, they don't do this anymore. That doesn't make you righteous. It's only a blood of Jesus. The law could not make the person righteous because no one could keep the law. Only person that ever kept it was Jesus, perfectly. And people begin to think that they never did do this. They're going to stone the lady because they've never committed adultery. And Jesus let people know if you looked on a woman and had those thoughts in your heart, you committed adultery. Oh, what are you going to do with that now? See, no one was able going to be able to keep the law. They're going to need Jesus. And that's one thing the law proved. It proved you're going to need Jesus. If the law could have made you faultless, then Jesus would have never came. And what happens to people, they're still trying to keep the Ten Commandments thinking if they do that, they'll be right with God. But if you hate your brother, I mean, there's a lot of hate going on today. <laughs> you know, when you've seen more hate going on today than today, well, that's murder. And we're not to hate anybody. And so we have the love, as believers, we have the love of God inside of us. And we need to realize that, thank God for what Jesus did, we've been made right with God. And we are called the righteous of God in Christ. We're called justified. We just read there in Romans 5, verse 9, that we're now justified. <clears throat> Excuse me, not when we get to heaven. This is right now. We're just, we're just as right with God today as we are when we get to heaven because of what Jesus' blood has done for us. And knowing that Jesus made us right with God keeps us peaceful. You know, there in Romans, let's go back there one more time. In Romans chapter 5, or maybe more than once, huh? In Romans chapter 5 again. Now the scripture says here, uh, let's start here in verse 1. Therefore, being justified by his blood, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So knowing that we're right with God because Jesus' blood causes us to have peace in our heart. Knowing I'm right with God, because not because I don't do certain things, but because of what Jesus did. And when people try to keep the law, you know, they get all kinds of kinds of works. Thinking that, look, I don't do this. I remember one time when we was teenagers, and we wanted to go, I was at this lake, and wanted to, three of us guys wanted to go fishing. So we asked this man if we could use his, his uh, pier he had. He went way out in the lake. And so we wanted to go out there and go fishing. And he said, well, no, you can't use today. It's Sunday. Well, I, you know, I, think, I go to church, but I don't think about this, you know. you know. And they begin to give us this little lecture about how it'd be so bad, you know, if see, people saw someone fishing on Sunday. Well, you see, now he got really into the, to the law. He's trying to become righteous. He got the wrong Sabbath day anyway, but he's trying to become right with God by not doing something like not fishing. Now, we're, we're just teenagers, and I don't think any of us understood what in the world he's talking about. We just knew it was some kind of bondage. <laughs> well, it was bondage, you know. Well, if you're not supposed to fish on Sunday, it still doesn't make you right with God because you don't fish on Sunday or whatever day you pick not to go fishing on. 
Now, what makes us right with God is not anything we do or don't do. And people get in a list of things in their own mind. Well, I don't do that anymore. The Lord told me to give that up. If I'd give that up, he'd bless me. No, he didn't tell you, if you give that up, I'll bless you. We're already blessed. We're already right with God because of what Jesus did. Not because we gave up something. We don't give up anything to become right with God. Jesus made it right with God. And that's what happens. People want to think, well, I gave up this for God. We don't, you know, it's not like we got some idol we're sacrificing animals to. No. Jesus is our sacrifice. He's the one that made us right with God. Not because we gave something up. And people like to talk about what they gave up to the Lord. See, it goes over to self-righteousness again. Look what I've done. The one thing about great thing in heaven right now, there is no one up there walking around talking about what they did for God. And that's the reason they're here. There's not one person up there walking around saying, well, you know, I always tithe. And that's why I'm here. Or, I was a preacher of the gospel. And that's why I'm here. No, that no, no one's saying that because that didn't get you to heaven. It's only Jesus' blood. And thank God there's no boasting going on in heaven about what I did to get here. I gave up this and I gave up that. And that's how I come I'm here. No. No, 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 no. No one's saying that. It's only Jesus gets you there. His blood. His blood is what sanctified us, made us right with God. Not our performance, not our good conduct, not our conduct, not our good behavior, not our self-righteousness, not because we don't do this anymore, we don't do that anymore, and we promised God we'd never do that again. That doesn't make us right with God. What made us right with God is Jesus' blood. And his blood qualified us to receive all the Father has. Not our performance, not our behavior. See, and people get over in the works. Like that lady said to me, she was she gave up chocolate for Lent. What are you giving up for Lent? I said, I'm not giving up nothing. Well, she was shocked by that. And she knew I was a preacher. Well, I said, what are you giving up chocolate for? Well, it's my sacrifice. I said, well, Jesus is your sacrifice. See, people want to offer up some sacrifice to become right with God. No, Jesus made us right with God. He's the one that made us right with God. And then a lawyer told me that he would, he'd given up, what did he say, cheese? I gave up cheese for Lent. I said, why? Well, that's my sacrifice. I said, well, Jesus, your sacrifice. Well, uh, well, it's, uh, it's our tradition. I said, well, Jesus said your tradition is to make the word of God of none effect. <laughs> People always want to, see, they always want to bring up what they gave up for God. And that gets over into self-righteousness. If you're not supposed to do something, don't do it. But that doesn't make you right with God because you do it. Don't, you don't do it. It doesn't, you don't lose your divine protection because you did something wrong. Divine protection was given to you. It's like healing was given to us. Health was given to us. Prosperity was given to us. All these blessings were given to us. They've already been given to us. We can't earn them. And we do something wrong, we don't lose them. We didn't do anything to get them. We can't do anything to lose them. What we need to do is maintain our confession of faith and thank God I have what the Word of God says I am. I'm the righteous of God in Christ. I'm complete in Christ. And when you sin, you really want to say, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. That's going to empower the person to help them live in victory. But if they wall around in the guilt and condemnation and want to go days, punish themselves because they committed a sin last week, then they're going to become prey to the enemy. Because the enemy will convince them in their own mind that they're not right with God. And that's why they might as well just give up trying to live this Christian life. You can't do it. You messed up. You just can't do this at all. And keeps on going with the doubt and condemnation. As soon as condemnation comes, guilt, you want to resist it. I refuse this in Jesus' name. I, I, it's written, no condemnation in Christ Jesus. I refuse this shame. Jesus took my shame on the cross. And don't be ashamed of anything you've ever done. And don't be embarrassed about anything you've ever done. And don't receive any guilt and condemnation about everything. Just think on Jesus. Consider him. Don't consider you. Consider him. Don't consider what you've done or haven't done. Only consider Jesus. What did Jesus do? Find out in those epistle letters. Read those scriptures like in him, in whom, in Christ, in Christ Jesus. That's going to tell us about who we are. And the more you build yourself up that, the more confidence you're going to have in Jesus Christ. And people don't like to be around a confident Christian. We're not, I'm not about being arrogant. Confident. Confident comes by knowing who you are in Christ. Arrogance comes by bragging on you. But we're bragging on what Jesus did and who we are in Christ Jesus. I am the righteous of God in Christ. I am right with God. You're just as right with God as Jesus is because God sees in Jesus. Just like what, what God said about Jesus, this is my beloved son, who I'm well pleased. That's what he says about you. You're my beloved son, who I'm well pleased. You're my beloved daughter, whom I'm well pleased. Just as pleased as God is with Jesus, he is that pleased with you. He's just that pleased with you as he is with Jesus because he sees you in Christ. He, God doesn't see any of your faults. He doesn't see any of your flaws. And you don't want to look at him. Because the more you look at him, the less you're looking at Jesus. Just keep looking. How do you look at Jesus? Do I get a picture on the wall? No, just take scriptures. 
some of those are going to be read today. I'm complete. I'm, I'm in righteousness of God in Christ. I've been justified by Jesus' blood. You don't have to understand what the words mean. Start saying them anyway. And as a process of time, you'll begin to get more revelation knowledge about who you are in Christ Jesus. And just keep looking at him. You can't do anything to become receive divine healing. It's a gift. It belongs to you. So does divine protection. You're never going to have perfect performance. You're never going to have perfect behavior in this, in this life. And you don't have to have it. It's already been given. All the blessings, divine protection, divine prosperity, divine health, has already been given to the church, to the world, to the body of Christ. Everybody's already been given everything because Jesus already paid the price. But when a person starts trying to earn it, they're going to fall short. They're always going to come up short of something. Their mind's going to say, well, you, didn't have, you haven't done your best. You haven't read enough scripture. You don't have enough faith. You haven't walked in love enough. You got in strife last week with your boss. Well, that getting strife it, with strife with your boss doesn't stop the blessings. They've already been given. God's not just giving them out. They've already been given. You know, you'd get some email. If you'll do this, God will bless you. We're already blessed. We're not trying to do anything to get blessed. We're already blessed. We start the gate blessed. We receive all the Father has. We are complete. We just read there in Colossians 2, verse 10. We are complete. Not trying to get complete and then God's going to heal us. We're not doing anything get, get, to get God to heal us. He's, we read there in 1 Peter chapter 2, we're already healed. By whose stripes ye were healed. It doesn't say you have to do anything to get this healing. Jesus never told anyone, go get the sinner of your life and I'll heal you. There was no one that was perfect that got their healing because they were perfect. Think about this. In the Old Testament, when they partook of the Lamb, there wasn't one perfect, perfect person there. And when we partake in communion, we're partaking of the Lamb, Jesus' body. And by his stripes, we're healed. And when we partake of that communion, that bread, we're receiving divine healing in our body. We drink of that cup, we're receiving Jesus' blood in our body. And that's what we do, that's what we do when we have communion. Remind yourselves, I'm healed. And just keep taking communion. Partake of that bread, which is Jesus' body. And thank you, Father God, by his stripes, I'm healed. I mean, if you did it 10 times a day, so what? It's reminding you of the covenant you have with God. And that cup is Jesus' blood. And that reminds us of who we are in Christ Jesus. And it's important to have it. You've been made a priest, so you can have it in your own home. And keep on celebrating what Jesus did for you. Father God, we pray today. I thank the Lord for each of their person. They're healed, they're delivered, they're redeemed, and blessed because of what Jesus did. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If you, have you received Jesus Christ, Lord? Maybe you're not sure. Or you know you've never done it. God wants you to receive his son, Jesus Christ. I'm going to read the scriptures here in Romans chapter 10. Verse 9, verse 10, and verse 13. And if you're not sure, if you know you haven't done it, let's do it today. Let's receive Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. Once you do it, then you've, you've received eternal life. Now, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10, and verse 13, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believeth the righteous, and with the mouth confession made salvation. Now, verse 13 says, For whosoever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Real simple. is receiving Jesus Christ, the Lord. Confess in Jesus Christ, Lord. Pray this prayer with me and receive Jesus Christ, your Lord. Say these words out and mean it, and you'll become born again. you become saved. God, I come, just say this. God, I come to you today to receive Jesus Christ, my Lord. I believe in my heart and I confess my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe Jesus crucified, took my sins on the cross, took my judgment of sin, died, was buried, and God raised him to death. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. And thank you that your blood has cleansed me from all sins I've ever committed and ever will commit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The most important part of that prayer is that you confess Jesus Christ, Lord. There was a lot of words there, but the most important part is that you confess Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. If you just did that, I'd like to hear from you. You can email me if you'd like to at jesseritsministries.com. I want to encourage you to go buy a Bible if you don't have one. Start reading the Gospel of John. Start attending the church to preach of Jesus Christ on the way to heaven. Tell that church or that pastor that you received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Watch someone preach. And don't help you grow and develop spiritually. And get involved with them. Help them get the gospel out. Be faithful to help build up God's kingdom. And we also have church on the phone night, 7 o'clock. That phone number and access code should be right here on the Facebook page. So call in. Call a bit earlier. You can fellowship with the saints. And continue to watch these messages. They'll help you grow and develop spiritually. Really enjoyed being with you today. I want to encourage you. Keep speaking God's word. And keep claiming I'm the righteous of God in Christ. Till next time, it's Brother Rich Bunyan. We love you. We're praying for you. And remember, Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father.